In this video, we'll be getting started with using Doubler in Ableton Live Lite. Once you've downloaded and registered the Doubler app, you'll want to click Create New Profile to open up a blank profile. At this point, you'll also want to make sure the Doubler mic is properly connected, and if it is, the logo at the top here will be lit up green. Once this is done, open Ableton Live and go to the preferences by hitting Command Comma. Enter the audio tab to make sure the buffer size is set to 128 samples or below in order to reduce latency. If you're on Windows and using an audio driver such as ASIO for All, you'll want to make sure the buffer size in your driver settings matches the one in Ableton. To enable Doubler's control dials for MIDI mapping, enter the Link MIDI tab, and in the MIDI port section, make sure the track and remote switch is set to on for the Doubler input port. We won't be covering MIDI mapping in this video, but we have a video dedicated to MIDI mapping in Ableton on our Ableton Live Lite page. You can now exit the preferences. To get you started, we've created a project which you can download from our Ableton Live Lite page. This project comes set up with a few instruments so you can get playing with Doubler quickly. To download this, you can navigate to our Live Lite page and select Download. Once it's successfully downloaded, open up the folder and click on the project here. You can see in this project we've set up a few tracks and already recorded in a few melodies and beats using Doubler. Each melody or beat is recorded into one of these clips. When I launch a scene, which is a horizontal line of clips, they all start playing at the same time. I can switch between the scenes to launch different combinations. Here's an example. To record your own ideas into these clips, let's first set up Doubler. To control drums or samples in Ableton, you'll first want to set up a few triggers. You can check out our other video on how to train triggers for a more in-depth guide, but I'm just going to quickly add a few now. Remember to use short and sharp sounds for your triggers. Cha 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 We're going to map our first but syllable to the bass drum, which is already C1. We're going to map the second one to the acoustic snare, which is D1. And the third one, we want to go to control the third hi-hat, which is the T sound. You can change these manually at any time to control what sample you're triggering. Now in Ableton, I can simply record arm the drum channel we've set up, double check it's receiving in from, from doubler, and then use my train sound to control the drums. Doubler sends trigger MIDI via channel 10. If you want to create your own drum track, you can come to this drum tab here in Ableton and drag in whatever kit you want. Make sure you have Doubler selected in the MIDI from drop-down menu, and below in this channel selector, you can also select which MIDI channel you're receiving data from. By default, channel 1 receives MIDI from the pitch side of Doubler, while channel 10 receives MIDI information from the trigger side of Doubler. We're going to play some triggers, so channel 10 is a good option. Let's play in a quick beat. It takes some practice to play many triggers at once, so we'll just start with recording a kick and snare. First enable the metronome along with its count-in feature. This gives us a 4-beat countdown before recording starts. We're going to click the session record button because we want to record in this session view. Let's make sure all other clips are stopped with this master stop button here. And give it a go. So we missed a few, so we can drag the notes here, edit what we've done. And you can also quantize by selecting all with Command A and then hitting Command U. Now we want to add a hi-hat to the same clip. With this plus enabled, when you click Session Record, it adds MIDI to your clip instead of replacing it. Let's give it a try.
just made it shorter so this part loops. After recording you can also manually draw in other parts and you can also change the velocity of each note here. We've also dragged the percussion style drum rack from Ableton's selection to the next channel. Since we're still using triggers, our trained sounds are still mapped to the C, D and F sharp notes. We'll change some of these around for the percussion samples. So I'll head back to Doubler. For my sound that was trained to the kick, I'll change this to a D note. For the sound that was mapped to a snare, I'll change it to an A note. And for the third drum, I'll change that to a high C. Now let's record a clip to go with our drums. Again, I'll quantize it with Command U. Now let's try controlling a pitched instrument with Doubler. Before doing this, you'll first want to turn your triggers off and enable your controls. Now you'll want to make sure to have selected a scale in Doubler. You can do this easily by singing an idea into the mic and our auto key detect feature will then put you in a key automatically based on your example. You can also change it manually at any point via the key drop down menu here or reset it to chromatic to again be able to use the auto key detect feature. In this example, we've used the key of C minor, and now that's set up, I can start singing your humming melodies to control the synths we've got in the project. Record arm the track you want to control, double check it's receiving info from Doubler and MIDI channel 1, and then start singing and humming. If you want to create your own synth channel, create a new MIDI channel by right clicking here, clicking insert MIDI track, and then dragging in any instrument or preset from the instrument tab here. Now let's record arm our sub bass channel and try to play over the beat. You can then go into your MIDI clip to make any changes, fix up any ghost notes, change the notes you played, change the velocities, etc. When singing the bass, I use some low notes, but if you don't think you can sing low notes, you can always shift the octave down to launch lower notes when you're singing higher notes. There's loads of things you can add in Ableton Live to get more creative with your ideas. We've loaded up the synthetic string pad on another MIDI channel to be able to try out some of Live's MIDI devices. Doubler is monophonic, but you can convert an individual MIDI note into a chord using this chord device here in Ableton's MIDI effects. The MIDI effect automatically places itself behind the instrument. You can select all of the intervals that your chord will have. For example, we'll set an octave higher. We'll set a fifth, which is seven semitones up, and we'll set a third for a minor third chord. So let's try singing something into this. Doubler also has an internal chord feature that automatically launches the triad chords of the note you sing. So let's turn off Ableton's chord MIDI device and check out Doubler's. There are more instruments we've laid out here like keys and synths, but the sound we're going to look at last in the video is an arpeggiated lead. We used the lead heart and soul preset and dragged in the arpeggiator MIDI device. 
Now when we sing and hold a note, the arpeggiator will be activated. We've also placed a delay afterwards from the audio effects here. So we don't want the same note to repeat all the time, so we'll make sure our chords is enabled in doubler. We'll increase the steps maybe. Can change the rate. There's a great selection of effects on offer in Live Light, including reverb, a filter, phasers, and much more, and it's definitely worth exploring all the effects here in this tab. To wrap things up, we're going to move the clips from our session view to the arrangement view so we can get started on finishing a track. To do this, you have two options. The first is manually clicking and holding a clip, clicking tab, and then dropping it manually, like this. And then you can duplicate with Command D, and there are lots of other useful commands you can use. Let's try another one. Make sure to drag it to the same channel it was on before, so percussion to percussion. The second way of doing this is more fun and hands on. When you click this arrangement record button, anything you do in the session view will be recorded to the arrangement view. We've made it easy for ourselves in this project because we've organized our clips into scenes that are all sections of a song. Let's try to jam out an arrangement, and remember you can switch between the arrangement and session views using tab just to make sure everything is recording. So now we can switch to the arrangement view with tab, click this orange play button here and this will allow us to start working in the arrangement view. So that's how to get started using Doubler with Ableton Live Lite. It's a good idea to head to Ableton's website to learn more about Live Lite as Ableton is really its own world and there's always something new to explore. Also make sure to check out our other setup guides and tutorials to go more in depth about how to get the most out of Doubler. See you soon.